Hello and welcome to Devlog 7. I'm Ian Lindsay from Game Digits, and this week we'll be going through the mission and tutorial system, along with the character voiceover and reaction process. Okay, so let's start with the mission and tutorial system. For this, I have several scriptable objects. The main object defines the mission as a whole, and contains a list of other scriptable objects that define individual tasks that need to be performed within that mission. Each task is then defined in its own scriptable object. This is data such as the speech text, the audio sample and which acting clip to play when the task is started. Remember the acting stage from the previous devlog? Ok, moment of truth. The time has come. It's time to turn this object into a crushed version of itself. We now need to define what the player needs to do, and these are scripted. A drop down list is used to pick what type of task it is, and also a string to give it some context. Great stuff. So here we have an ordered list of scriptable objects which define the required tasks for the tutorial. Also, another thing to define are the character interruptibles. Here's an acting clip for when the player invades the puppet's personal space. I can then define these along with the tasks in the main tutorial definition. Also, I'm super excited that fellow VR developer Beard or Die is doing some voice acting for this. And here he is in action. Okay, newbie, let's get you on track here. I've got plans tonight, so I don't want you wasting my time, got it? There's two squeezy type of things on your controller. So, go ahead and squeeze both of those puppies. Give me a good old thumbs up. Great stuff. Now with that in place, we need to define triggers and collision for the puppet especially for when the player breaches their personal space. Also, when the audio is interrupted, we need to go back to a reasonable place in the original clip that was playing at the time. We simply can't go back to where it left off. Therefore, we need to know where the silent parts are in the audio, where the sentences start and end. Thankfully, I can read how wide the mouth is. Therefore, I can detect when there's a fairly long pause. So here it is in action. Now. While you've got the object held, pull back on the thumbstick to bring it to your hand. Hey, quit that. Quit messing around. I'm not into that. This is my personal bubble. You're all up in it. Stay out of my bubble. It's my personal space. Don't be weird. Cut it out. Now, while you've got the object held, pull back on the thumbstick. And here's some more of the tutorial. Open that door by aiming at the handle and holding grip or trigger to swing it open. Grab that cupboard handle. Handle it. Swing it right open. Ok, great stuff. The logic is looking good. However, as you can see, there are just temporary graphics. There's only basic boxes and cylinders. There's not even an environment. So the next step is to create the puppet's office where the training takes place. Therefore, I need a collection of references ready to model this scene later. Since the system is using definitions in scriptable objects, I can use the same process to create in-game missions as I did for the tutorials. Therefore the whole system remains the same and can be built on over time, and any new in-game missions and tasks can be added without having to write a lot of bespoke code. Well that's everything for this week for Devlog 7, and I'll see you in Devlog 8.